Hello, my name is Sadaf Munshi. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of North Texas. My paper is about the documentation of minority, minority and low resource languages towards building a global infrastructure and capacity with a special focus on Pakistan. Some general concerns in language documentation that we've been discussed from time to time include sustainability of language resources through a global infrastructure. For example, the Open Language Archives community or OLAC is an international partnership of institutions and individuals creating a worldwide virtual library of language resources by developing consensus on best current practice for the digital archiving of language resources and developing a network of interoperating repositories and services for housing and accessing such resources. Many recommendations have been made for latest tools, methods, and technology in language documentation. Language documentation training centers or labs have been established at different institutions. For example, language documentation training center at the University of Hawaii or in-field uh, institute on field linguistics and language documentation at UC Santa Barbara. There are different dimensions of language documentation. And the paramount importance should be given in these to training. Training is important from creation to annotation, preservation, and dissemination of linguistic records. What is missing or lacking in many cases is that the native speakers of endangered languages in countries with limited resources do not have access to such training opportunities or have very limited access. Main challenges involve lack of institutional support and lack of funding, as well as lack of infrastructure, of course. What needs to be done is a strong emphasis on bringing training and infrastructure to the field. Why? Because it is cost effective. It is efficient in terms of the outcomes and long-term implications of these projects. Here's an overview of um, existing resources on South Asian languages currently. We have digital dictionaries of South Asia in Digital South Asia Library um, at the University of Chicago. Some mostly older ones, but uh, not under copyright dictionaries. There are no corporate. Digital Media Archive at the University of Chicago. Hawk and Bashir in their 2016 appendix uh, list nine electronic corpora, six of which are only on Sanskrit. The three non-Sanskrit entries are the Emil Corpus, the Nepali National Corpus, and the Linguistic Data Consortium for Indian Languages. The main current um, repository of, Indo, uh, of uh, South Asian languages I feel, is at is the Digital Collections um, Library at the University of North Texas. We have corpora on Burushaski, Lamkang, Kong, uh, Manipuri, Mizo, and several other languages. It's called CORSA, or Computational Resource of South Asian Languages, headed by Dr. Shobna Chalaya. Um, so I look at the linguistic diversity in Pakistan. This is the area where I've been working in some of the focal areas of my research in the red color, and also in Indian side of Kashmir. So a brief look at the languages of Pakistan. About 200 million people speak 72 to 75 provincial and regional languages. Um, major languages include Hindko with about 2 million speakers, Pashto 26.9, Siraiki 13.9, Brahui 4, Baluchi 7, Urdu about 10 million, Punjabi uh, about 60.6 .6 million, and Sindhi with about 18.5 million speakers. As many as 75 different languages are spoken in the country. While 65 of these languages are regional, seven languages, including Urdu, the national lingua franca, and English, are used as official languages in all four provinces of Balochistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Punjab, and Sin, as well as in Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Pakistan regions. According to the official figures, the most widely spoken language in Pakistan is Punjabi, followed by Pashto and Sindhi. 
Other major languages are Baluchi, Hindko, and Brahu. According to a report by UNESCO, around 27 languages spoken in the region um, are facing extinction. The current state of affairs in terms of the field of linguistics in Pakistan is here. In terms of the departments of linguistics dedicated to the study of languages, there currently are none. All linguistics departments, if they do exist, are housed in English departments. Most of these focus primarily on English language teaching. I am not aware of even a state of the art study on this topic. Most of the language documentation efforts, if any at all, are conducted by small non-government community organizations such as Forum for Language Initiatives, but these have little or no institutional support. There are some individual efforts, many individual efforts, but training is what is lacking. Current state of affairs in terms of the languages is here. Urdu prioritized at various institutions. Most available works are on Urdu. For example, Center for Language Engineering at the University of Engineering and Technology in Lahore, CLE, has text corpora work on essential Urdu linguistic resources, tags set for Urdu corpus, and what is called Urdu OCR. Sindhi is another uh, very important language. It is a medium of instruction in some schools in Sindh. Considerable institutional backing um, is available and research is also available on this language other than in comparison to other languages. There is a Sindhi English dictionary developed jointly by Jennifer Cole at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and Sarmad Hussain at CLE. It has clickable alphabetical word index and is searchable by either Sindhi script and trees or by Roman representation. There's work towards Sindhi corpus building ongoing. Um, status is to be ascertained. There is a Sindhi language authority uh, working on online Sindhi dictionary, online Sindhi learning portal, and other specialized dictionaries. A conference, Sindh Vision Global Virtual Conference, um, is scheduled for February 27, 2021. Uh, the topic of this conference is challenges and opportunities in higher education and way forward. I'm not sure um, if language is one of the topics studied at the conference. At the conference. Um, another language, very important language, is Pashto. Computational work on this language is mainly uh, carried out at the Department of Computer Science, University of Peshawar. A 10,000 word open ended corpus is in development, um, has been in, in development. A Pashto transcription project was in, initiated in CLE in 2012. Its progress is to be ascertained. There's a Pashto Academy in Peshawar, but most of the work done by them is um, focused on literary studies, um, but little linguistic work. Next is the situation of Punjabi. Punjabi has the largest number of speakers in Pakistan. The total number of speakers of this language is about 100 million around the world. It's the 12th most widely spoken language in the world. There are a few computational resources and lexical corpora available on Punjabi, especially in Pakistan. Severely under-resourced language in Pakistan, much work has already been done, but only in India. No Punjabi language authority is there comparable to Sindhi language authority. Um, last, we tried to find um, only one paper was available on Punjabi language in Pakistan. There was a mention of lexical database of Pakistani regional languages found in the internet, but not much. There's Punjab Institute of Language, Art and Culture um, with some support from Punjab government, but no linguistic content or no events were reported. There is a grammar of Punjabi, Hindu and Saraiki in preparation or perhaps already published um, by Elena Bashi. I believe it's already published. Brahui is another language which belongs to Dravidian language family, one of the 27 languages of Pakistan facing extinction. 
there is some government support for this language and its promotion, um, especially because of its special status in terms of being a linguistic, kind of a linguistic isolate in Pakistan. There are some print publications and an international conference was held in uh, Islamabad in 2015 on, uh, on the Brahui language. Um, I found a website, um, brahuiacademy.org, but it was dysfunctional when I tried to access it. So the only language of Pakistan on which we have a significant amount of documentation work or documentation materials available currently is Burushaski. It's a linguistic isolate there has been little government support for this language as well. Um, a Burushaski Research Academy was established many years ago, which has published three volume Burushaski Urdu dictionary and some pedagogical materials. The Burushaski language documentation project was initiated by myself in 2003 and um, was carried on for many years um, until almost 2019 and is still, some of the work is still ongoing. Primary outcomes of this project is a book on Srinagar Burushaski, one of the dialects of the language spoken on the Indian side um, of Kashmir. Um, it's a descriptive and comparative account with analyzed texts. Uh, we have a repository of uh, digital uh, materials called Burushaski Language Resource, a web accessible digital collection archived at the UNT Digital Collections Library, which houses many audio and video materials um, or recordings with time aligned transcriptions, multi tier annotations, morphine to morphine translations into English, and collections of texts with free translations into English, not into. Um, we also have some papers published in different journals. Um, there's a, um, there are pedagogical materials and proposals for writing system, a secondary outcomes. There are some pictures of field work. Um, starting from 2003 in Srinagar and um, then in Gilgit and Islamabad and some other places with speakers of um, Burushaski, uh, different dialects of Burushaski and some personnel of the Burushaski Research Academy in the center of here. Currently, uh, my research focuses on the building capacity in the region. So uh, the ongoing project is on uh, documenting Mankiali, but also other languages of Pakistan, preparing people for documenting other languages of Pakistan. Mankiali is a severely endangered language um, uh, of Indo-Aryan language family spoken in a village, small village of Pakistan called Dana, primarily in Dana. Use of Mankiali in different domains is rapidly declining and the total number of fluent speakers is fewer than 500 individuals with rapid language shift on board. It exists, um, uh, it exhibits a number of features that are of interest to phonologists, typologists, sociolinguists, and historical linguists which have not been studied because it's been completely undocumented language until this project was um, started. The ongoing project is to is expected to provide a better insight into the development and evolution of this language and the adjoining uh, Northwestern group of Indo-Aryan languages. You know, the project expects to be a springboard leading to opportunities that can increase uh, the capacity and help build infrastructure to document many languages by providing various training opportunities. So the main focus of this project is capacity building. So a number of um, such efforts were made. We, we did a week long hands-on training workshop in the capital city of Islamabad in January, 2019 with a team of personnel from UNT associated with me. Um, participants from different languages of Pakistan, including Islamabad, Swat, Karachi, Lahore, Gilgit, Chitral, Danna and Quetta attended and received intensive training in tools and methods of language documentation about 22 participants, students and scholars, as well as native speakers of different languages attended the workshop. Uh, participants were divided into five working teams representing different languages. They recorded and illustrated data in audio and visual formats. Um, data recorded included discussions, narratives, word lists, morphological paradigms in four different languages. And one whole day was dedicated to data management. Some more pictures. 
from this workshop some more students and scholars at the completion of the training workshop at Air University, Islamabad. This was followed by another workshop um, on the orthography development, um, focusing on Burshavsky and Kashmiri language. And this workshop was held in summer 2019 in Chitra, in collaboration with Forum for Language Initiatives. About 20 participants attended this workshop in Chitra, Follow-up discussions were held with community members and native speakers of 10 different highly endangered languages of Chitral Valley and the surrounding areas, namely Khoar, Urshaski, Yadga, Kalula, Shekhani, Dameli, Gawarbati, Kalashi, Torvali, and Manchali. It was followed by field trips to Kalasha Valley, Shekhanande, and finally to the village Dana. Here are some pictures of uh, this workshop and the follow-up um, field, field trips. Uh, on the left is Chitra, which is home to speakers of eight or more different highly endangered languages. And on the right is a, the, a picture from Shekhan, um, which is home to about 500 speakers of a language called Shekhani. Very, very unique language with very, very different uh, sound system based on what we found. Um, um, in the recordings we made. There's the field trip, pictures of the field trip to Dana, some Manchali speakers of Pakistan, um, different pictures from July, 2019. This was followed by um, a training opportunity at the University of North Texas where um, two teams of um, vi uh, visiting scholars, native speakers, from Pakistan were invited to the US uh, for extended period of training. Um, one in spring and one in fall of 2019. Here are some pictures. Native speakers of Manchali, Burshaski and Kashmiri receiving training and work with faculty and students at UNT. Extended training was given in tools and methods of documentation. Um, the personnel engaged in research projects and creation of language resources over an extended period of time and continue to do so. So the framework used involves data collection, transcription, annotation, analysis, organization, dissemination, and archiving of a comprehensive series of various complex and interconnected steps in documentation projects, which require an integrated approach on part of the field workers or language documenters. Language documentation is a commitment which entails a language, a long-term uh, relationship with the communities whose languages are being studied or documented. In areas of enormous linguistic diversity and an imminent danger of language death or loss, time is a big factor. So training and capacity building of local and indigenous communities is not only important, but the only efficient way to meet the various goals and objectives of any successful documentation project. So the need of the hour is the role of the outside linguists is paramount in case of a situation such as that of Pakistan. The linguists must consider how the local academic and linguistic community is to be served during the design and implementation stages of the projects. People are eager to document their languages, but they're lacking in basic skills and training in documenta documentary linguistic methods. Training opens doors for them and become more efficient and deeply involved in documentary methods. However, it is often inaccessible due to lack of resources and funds. So the broader impacts of a project like this would be fostering acad academic and research ties between local scholars native speaker consultants, and highly trained professionals and researchers, enhancing student and faculty development and involvement at both ends of the uh, language documenters and uh, the native speaker consultants who are being trained, extending training and opportunities towards professional development to personnel at multiple levels and stages. So the future prospects of a project like this would be creating a trained workforce for documenting different highly endangered languages of a region. This involves a major role by linguists, scholars, community members, and native speaker consultants. 
a number of roadblocks need to be avoided in documentation research in a politically high risk country such as Pakistan. Research outcomes must be founded on a culturally sensitive platform. Local researchers and scholars should be exposed to international scholarship through collaborations, commitment and contact. So the main objective would be to help address the research and intellectual needs of a linguistically diverse but highly underrepresented and underprivileged area. Thank you. Trying to stop recording.